so when asked the question of what's the biggest moment of impact on my life, there's many things that automatically come to mind, but the most current thing is climate change. And I first learned about this issue here at Buena in my freshman bio class with Ms. Clark when she informed us about the issue with the U.S. dropping out of the Paris Agreement. And the Paris Agreement, if you do not know, is a global-wide effort to become more environmentally conscious and to cut CO2 emissions. And when the U.S. dropped out, China soon followed. And <laughs> these are the two biggest greenhouse gas emission producers in the world. And so it's a pretty big deal that they dropped out. And so that's what made it so mind-boggling to me is that why, since you're such big contributors to this issue, why did you drop out or why do you not believe in it since it's such a big deal in my mind, you know? And so I automatically think, like, at least we have the realization of the topic, at least we created the Paris Agreement, but we need something, whew, <laughs> we need something that is ten times the size of the Paris Agreement for us to all follow so that we can get Earth back onto its track of being able to be there for our future. And so I just kind of think, like, are we trying to answer this question or solve this question by just simply booking it off to another planet and on this massive spaceship? And I honestly make the connection to Wally, you know, because it's just kind of like they just took off because they ruined our planet and they just made little robots clean up all our mess and then hopefully come back. Is that what we're expecting to do? Because Logistically thinking, are we honestly thinking of taking 7 billion plus people onto a giant spaceship and then shipping them off into another world? And even though we're going to analyze a new planet and see what kind of life forms on there, do you think they're going to want us to interrupt their life, you know? And so that's going to cause every single Star Wars movie out there, space battles everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, that's going to maybe even cause us to die. So that can be dead end there, you know? Honestly, if we were to live and able to be on that planet, you know, who are the people that are being chosen to go on that planet? And obviously it's the rich, the famous, and the smart ones to set off the generation to a good start, you know? And so it's just kind of like, what about the rest of the people? And I honestly, uh, I automatically think of the animals here, because I'm a huge animal lover, I'm an equestrian, so I ride horses, and um, I'm out in nature a lot, and so it's made me appreciate our world for what it is, and honestly it makes me feel guilty when I don't appreciate a sunset, for instance, and it's just kind of like, I shouldn't be thinking about how little we have left. And that's why it's impacted me so much, is that, why isn't anyone doing anything about it? It's the public that have recognized it, and it's great, especially with having Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, and, <laughs> Greta Thunberg in the back of us to voice our opinions. Like, she's done everything right. She's lined her ducks up perfectly, even spoke, speaking to the United Nations Climate Conference, filling her guts about how you know, frustrated and depressed and sad about this issue she is, but what has been done because of it? Oh, in 20 years we'll just cut CO2 emissions by 20%. Okay, that's in 20 years. We need it now because in 10 years, the things that we're causing are irreversible. And it's not even our fault, to be honest. The public have done a lot of things wrong, but at the same time, we're not necessarily the polluters. We are given the pollutants to pollute with. And that's the problem that people don't really see, is that it's not necessarily us that's the problem, it's these big corporations and global leaders that are providing these things to us, and what else are we supposed to do? Once we're surrounded by all this in plastic, because we're, we live such fast-track, busy lives, and we're honestly overworked, especially in California, because of how much it costs you to live, you know? And so it's just like we want something that's easy, so we honestly just pop in a little microwaveable dinner so we can go to bed earlier. And so it's things like that where we want single or we want to use things that are easy for us. So that means plastic bottles and prepackaged foods. And honestly, even if we want to cook something, the vegetables and fruits that are here, we have to package them into a plastic bag to buy them. It's just kind of like it's a little bit ridiculous. But it's not us that's setting us up. It's not. It's, it's not us that's setting us up. Oh, God, it's not setting us up wrong. It's the world leaders and the people that are in charge of us that are. And that's the main thing that makes me so frustrated because it is not us. We're doing great. We're trying to be environmentally conscious, even having a you know 500 people plus strike here in Ventura to be environmentally conscious. And that's why I'm like, the public's doing great. But the thing is, is that the reason why this issue has still not been solved is because of money and power. Because money is so valued upon on this earth that if we choose our ways and methods to be more environmentally conscious, 
they don't want to do that because it will cost them a paycheck. And it's just horrible. But then I like to ask, you know, what is the value of that money when there is no earth for it to be valued on in a hundred years? And so it's just kind of like makes you think, huh, that's a little bit weird. And it's the same thing with global issues. Like, what is the value of that issue when there is no world to be, for it to be valued on? And so obviously with the coronavirus, that's a different story. That's an issue that needs to be fought. But at the same time, we need to rise the issue of climate change to the surface and understand what's going on. And it's frightening to me that we just haven't done that because I like to think of it as like a bed. So the earth is a bed, climate change is, whew, climate change is the blanket on top of the bed. And the stuffed animals are all, you know, the global issues and problems. And eventually they pile up on the daily to cover up that blanket of climate change. And so honestly, that just kind of shows the point. Climate change just gets shoved underneath, underneath the rug. And it's horrible because it's such a huge issue that is going to impact all of our lives. And no one's doing anything about it. But the only reason why there is nothing being done about it is because no one knows what to do. And that is the main reason for my speech is or TED Talk is that I don't really know what to do, and that's why it's impacted me so much and why I'm so frustrated about it, because I don't know what to do. I just want to fix it, but there's, I don't really have any resources to. Of course, there's scientific research and statistics about what's going on and what you're causing, like, oh, you're, you're creating 2,000 pounds of trash per year, you need to stop, but how do you stop? You know, everyone is environmentally conscious to the point, but we, don't, we live such busy lives, as I said before, and we want things that are easy and simple for us to do. And while there are incredible people that use zero waste lifestyle or are, have zero waste lifestyles and they have like five years worth of trash in a mason jar and that's incredible. But the thing is that that's not really normal for people to do because people, not, you know, they're not necessarily lazy but we're just busy. And so it's just an issue upon issue upon issue and that's why this issue or problem is just so big and frustrating because I just want to fix it but there's really don't really have to. So it's just, it's impacted me to the point where I'm 16 and I'm, I shouldn't be thinking like, oh, I don't really want to have kids because I don't want to bring them into a damaged world. And where, you know, these story or fairy tale animals like giraffes, elephants, lions, tigers might be extinct because of the ecosystems that we've damaged and literally broken for them because they just weren't able to live anymore. And it's terrible because I don't want that to be like a fairy tale idea for my kid. Just looking at a stereo like looking at a book and then that book is teaching you to read, but you don't know what those animals are anymore because they aren't alive. And so that's what just kind of makes me think, okay, in 30 years, <laughs> where are we going to be with the amount of animals going extinct? And it's just I don't know, it's just really frustrating. So I just I feel like it's not particularly us that need to stop the continuation of it while, you know, of course we do need to. It's these world leaders and global powers that need to realize what they're doing and recognize the problem and know what to do so they can set us up for the best way possible and set up, set up our future generations for the best way possible. And that is the only way that we can stop climate change and hopefully save, one, set, uh, gosh, <laughs> save everyone on this planet. Thank you for listening and yeah, thank you.